So townhomes wouldn't be my personal first pick for a buy and hold investment, at least not here in BC. And by the end of this video, you're gonna understand why I think that way and maybe you'll agree with it. I'm Nat Asia Kelly. I talk about Canadian real estate and my local market of Abbotsford and the Fraser Valley. And if you are into that, you can subscribe to the channel for more content just like it. You can like this video to help me out if you'd like to. And if you want first access, early access to some of the best pre-sale projects out there, sign up to the Equity Club using the link below in my description. Now, before I get into my rationale for this video, I just want to also preface that townhomes can absolutely be a great investment. People always get so mad at me whenever I make a video about anything. There is nuance to everything, right? Just because I'm making a video through the lens that townhomes aren't a good investment, generally speaking, doesn't mean that they can't be a good investment for you. Doesn't mean that they're not ever a good investment. There are so many scenarios where townhomes are still a good investment. Generally speaking and broadly speaking, this is why I like condos better. So number one, the cap rates for a one bedroom condo versus a three bedroom townhome are quite a bit better. For example, this townhome here is listed for $720,000 in Abbotsford and would likely rent for around 2,900 bucks a month, give or take some. And after you add up the monthly rent to an annual rent and you divide that by the purchase price of the townhome, you will find that it has a cap rate of 4.8%. Cap rate is obviously just annual income divided by purchase price. Now this condo here, which is actually four or five years newer, and typically the newer something is the more compressed the cap rate gets. I couldn't actually find, this townhome was a 2017. I couldn't find a good 2017 condo, so I'm using a 2021. But this one's listed for 383,000 in Abbotsford and it would probably rent for around 1700 bucks a month, give or take some, meaning the cap rate on this is 5.3%. However, the true cap rate of a one bedroom condo would actually be slightly higher because the strata fees will be less and the property tax will be less, which I'm not adding into this equation for ease of time. But regardless, the rent you receive in comparison to the purchase price, owning a one bed versus a three bedroom townhome is roughly 10% better with the condo. Now, the second reason is I'm pretty sure I could find two really good one bedroom condos that would basically equal the exact same investment and price as one three bedroom townhome. So I could own two investment units as opposed to one townhome, meaning you'd be collecting roughly 3,400 bucks a month in rent instead of 2,900. Now, of course, you'll have double the property tax and double the strata fees, but you'll still net more money in your pocket. Also, your risk is now spread across two properties, right? Like if the there's a fire in the townhome complex that insurance doesn't fully cover, you know, you're eating all of that downside with the one townhome unit, as opposed to if one of your buildings catches on fire when you own condos, well, you still have the other 50% of your investment that's just fine. So that risk is spread off, spread out across two properties. Not only that, your risk is spread out across two tenants, right? So if your tenants just decide they wanna stop paying the monthly mortgage, well, at least you still have half of it coming in from the other condo, whereas with the townhome, you're pretty much who? And on top of that, your risk or potential risk is a lot lower with the condos, right? You just have less upfront money invested in each property. And the third reason is that there is an issue here in BC and Ontario with specifically two and three bedroom units. And you've heard me talk about this many times, but here we have something called rent control where you cannot raise the rent on your tenants. You can, but they give you a maximum prescribed allowable amount every year and it's nowhere near enough. It's like one to 3% every single year. So if you own that unit for multiple years, you know, your tenant's gonna be paying substantially below market rents, especially as of late when rent is going up, you know, eight to 20% per year. So for that reason, and as controversial as this sounds, as a landlord, you kind of want your tenant to leave every three-ish years because more than likely market rent will be substantially higher three to five years from now. Now, obviously it doesn't matter. You don't have to maximize the rent you receive every month. If you're paying two, three, four, five hundred bucks below market rent every single month, 
whatever. Just for not even having the hassle of having to find a new tenant and go through the whole process again, it's probably just better that, you know, that tenant is in there and they get a bit of a deal on their rent. However, it becomes an issue when you've owned the property for five, six, seven years and your tenant is paying $1,500 below market rent because now you're pretty much forced to sell that property because obviously the whole reason why we're investing is for an ROI and now you are receiving a significantly lower ROI on that property than what you should be receiving. Now it makes more sense to just sell that property, then you have to sell it tenanted, and then you have to sell it tenanted with a tenant that's paying lower than market rents. So the issue that you can run into with a two bedroom and three bedroom unit is that it is very easy to live in those styles of homes for a very long time, especially with a townhome, you could literally live the rest of your life and raise a family in a three bedroom townhome, which is fine. But again, if you own a townhome and you plan to own it for 10, 15 years and just keep it as part of your portfolio, there is guaranteed going to be a portion of time when you own that townhome where the tenant who's ever in there at the time is going to be paying substantially less than whatever the market rent is. And when you forecast that out over a long time frame, your ROI will be significantly lower with a townhome because you're more likely to have a tenant in there paying far less than market rates at some point. When you have a one bedroom unit, the likelihood your tenant is going to turn over every couple years is a lot higher. People need more space. They get married, they get new jobs, they have kids, they, you get what I'm saying? There's more reasons that people will have to upgrade their space living in a one bedroom condo versus a three bedroom townhome. So just to give you guys an example, I currently have a client who I'm trying to sell their property and it's tenanted out for 2,400 bucks a month, but the market rent for that home is $4,200 a month rent. So now the only people who can buy this product are people who actually want to buy it to move in and live there. The problem is the state of the home obviously isn't the best because it's been tenanted for so long. There's a lot of work that needs to be done immediately once somebody wants to move in and occupy that space. So we can't sell it to the investors because the tenants are paying way below market rent and the investors would have to inherit those tenants. And we can't sell it to a large portion of end users because most end users don't have money to do renovations after they buy the home and move in. So even though we wanna sell it and it's priced well, there's just very, very few buyers out there that can actually take on the burden of buying this home. Now, I know I'm talking very negative about townhomes. I have clients that have purchased townhomes, They've done very well on them. I have made videos about buying townhomes and how they can be a great buy. And it's a case by case basis. Like I said, there's tons of nuance, right? For example, townhomes in Chilliwack in December, November were an amazing buy. I put a client into a townhome last November, December, and they're probably up about 60, $70,000 right now. It's just everything lined up that that was a great buy at that time. And I myself would buy a townhome. I have pre-sale townhomes coming up in a Soyuz. They're gonna be like 680K, they're like 1800 square feet overlooking the water. That is something I would personally buy because there's really not much new product being launched in an area like that. And especially not that type of product with like a rooftop deck overlooking the lake and blah, 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 blah. But from a very broad speaking lens, this is the reason why I like one bedroom condos in our market is because you get the, the tenant turnover, which makes the unit a lot easier to liquidate. Your cap rates are gonna be a lot better as you're holding the unit and your upfront risk is much, much lower and you could just buy two one bedroom condos instead of like a townhome or something like that. But again, going back to townhomes, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, but townhomes, I'd say a big benefit with townhomes is that they occupy a lot more land. They, they take up actually more land. And for that reason, I think townhomes will become much more of a scarce asset. They will also almost become a luxury within the next decade. And uh, they'll probably become like the new detached home, so to speak. And I think for that reason, if you buy and hold a townhome, you're likely going to see some really, really good appreciation on that asset. But I think from a safety standpoint, as most investors don't have the capital to, you know, rent out these townhomes at significantly cash flow negative positions, most investors are probably better off buying a one bedroom condo and then maybe even possibly getting less appreciation over uh, on it over the course of 10 years, but holding it a lot safer over the duration of that decade. But let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm that Agent Kelly for early access to pre-sale deals and as well as those Asoyas townhomes I was talking about, you can sign up to the equity uh, club down below. 
Please subscribe to the channel. Like this video. I'm Matt Agent Kelly. I'm making moves to move you. Peace.